بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان استقى الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور مهدثاتها وكل مهدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد <coughs> So as you remember brothers we reached the end of the introduction which we covered last lesson we covered both of the introductions the first introduction from the original author Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah and then the uh, second the second introduction uh, that was by the, um, the Shaykh that's explaining uh, the original book, Shaykh Salih Al-Fawzan, Hafizullah. So we reached, as you can see on the screen, we reached, we reached um, the start of the three fundamental principles here. And um, that is Al-Risalat Al-Ula Al-Masail Al-Arba'a Al-Lati Tadhammanatha Surat Al-Asr. Alain. So, the treaties, the first treaties, which is the four affairs which Surah Al-Asr encompasses or covers. So, the first one is Al-Ilm, knowledge. The Shaykh says, he says, Qawluhu i'alam kalimatun tushiru ila l-ihtimami bil mawdu'i fa idha qal i'alam fa ma'nahu anna al-amr al-ladhi sayulqihi عليك أمر مهم فهذه الكلمة تدل على أهمية الموضوع التي يبدأ بها فيه So the Sheikh is mentioning there that he says so in his speech quoting the original author إعلم meaning to know he says that the word to know is a, it's a word that points us towards the importance of the topic that's going to be discussed or that which is going to be discussed, or the importance of it. And meaning that when somebody says no, it gets your attention, and so what comes after it holds importance. So, he says, so, so this word, to know, it points towards that which is important in terms of the topic that's being discussed, or what's going to come after. So the Shaykh, he continues and he says, وَمَعْنَا إِعْلَمْ فِعْلُ الْعَمْرِ وَفِعْلُ عَمْرٍ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ أي تألم والعلم هو إدراك شيء على ما هو عليه في الواقع أو أو تصور الشيء على تبقى تبقى الواقع أو تبقى الواقع So then the Shaykh goes on and he says, in the meaning of to know, as we all know in English, if we mention to know, or somebody says no, and you know what the meaning is. But in terms from the Arabic perspective, perspective the Sheikh um, says that it's a command verb from Al-Ilm. And it comes from Ta'allam. It means to learn. So, you know, when somebody says know something, they, they're intending by that, that you learn something or become aware of something that, they, then, that, that they're going to mention. And that's what the Sheikh mentions here. So he continues. <coughs> وَإِدْرَاكُ الشَّيْءِ عَلَى خِلَافِ مَا هُوَ عَلَيْهِ فِي الْوَاقِعِ أَوْ تَصَوْرُ الشَّيْءِ عَلَى خِلَافِ الْوَاقِعِ هُوَ الْجَهَلْ وَهُوَ ضِدُّ الْإِلْمِ So then the Shaykh mentions the opposite of knowing. So the opposite of knowing is ignorance. And that is, for example, where he mentions here, that is, that what opposes knowledge. So if you don't know about something, then it comes under ignorance. So if you're not aware of something, you're ignorant about it, basically, is what the Shaykh has mentioned. So the Shaykh continues and he says, قوله رحمك الله هذا دعاء لطالب العلم فالشيخ يدعو لطالب العلم بأن يرحمهم الله وأن يلقي عليهم رحمته سبحانه وتعالى فهذا فيه التلطف من المعلم بالمتعلم وأنه يبدأ بالكلام الطيب والدعاء الصالح حتى يؤثر ذلك فيه So then the Shaykh says, um, he says, that the original author mentions Rahmakullah 
and that and and this is a dua uh meaning may you know may Allah's mercy be upon you and it's to the one who's seeking knowledge or for example us we're reading this book so it's a dua that's being made uh, by the scholar by the sheikh the author uh, to Allah for us right so the sheikh he's he makes a supplication that Allah has mercy upon us right and also and this is also from courteousness as well or courtesy from the teacher to the one being taught and that is the beginning of the speech it's 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 a um it's a pure and good beginning you know something good to start with from uh the supplication of 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 of, of, of you know a, a sincere dua that that has an effect you know in us or upon us has an effect upon us and that um and that the person when we see such good manners from whoever it may be they were more likely to accept their speech and listen to them and, and pay attention um then we continue the shaykh says says amma ida bada al muallim bada al bada al muallim bil kalam al qasi wal kalam ghair munasib fa inna hadha yunafirhu فالواجب على المعلم وعلى من يدعو إلى الله وعلى من يأمر بالمعروف وينهى عن المنكر التلطف مع من يخاطبه بالدعاء له والثناء عليه والكلام اللين فإن هذا أدعى للقبول. Then the sheikh says likewise as for the one who begins with a speech that is harsh, so if somebody begins with something with harshness or inappropriate something that's inappropriate, indeed. Then the people who are listening will will flee from that. They will flee from that. So the sheikh says it's obligatory upon the teacher uh, or the one who calls to Islam, for example, is calling to Allah, or the one who commands the good and forbids the evil. Upon them is courtesy, being courteous, um, and having that softness, right? That kind of approach, because that is more likely to be accepted when you take that positive correct approach the listeners are more likely to accept um what's being said and like more likely to pay attention to what's being said as well so the shaykh continues and he says amma al muanid wal mukabir fa inna hadha lahu khitab akhir so the shaykh makes a distinction here so the, so what we've already mentioned in terms of the that courteous approach um, the you know soft approach, a uh, caring approach. Um, he said. He said the sheikh says as for the one who's stubborn and rejects the truth just off the bat without even listening, was just rejecting, um, or is arrogant. So for those kinds of people, and they're a particular group, a particular group of people, they have a different approach. And the sheikh mentions. So he says, um, the sheikh mentions. He says he says. قال الله سبحانه ولا تجادلوا أهل الكتاب إلا بالتي هي أحسن إلا الذين ظلموا منهم وقولوا آمنا بالذي أنزل إلينا وأنزل إليكم وإلهنا وإلهكم واحد ونحن له مسلمون. So that's from Surah Al-Ankabut, verse forty-six. And if we go to the translation of that surah, if we go to the translation. And argue not with the people of the scripture, Jews and Christians, unless it be in a way that is better with good words and in good manner, inviting them to Islamic monotheism with his verses, except with such of them as do wrong and say to them, we believe in that which has been revealed to us and revealed to you. Our Ilah, and you, uh, our Ilah God, and your Ilah God is one, i.e. Allah. And to him we have submitted as Muslims. So that's what's being said. Then we we can understand from what the Sheikh said that uh, the, the the evidence from the Quran confirms what he's saying. So the Sheikh continues and he says, he says, "فَالَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَعَانَدُوا وَكَابَرُوا هَؤُلَاءِ لَا يُخَاطَبُونَ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ بَلْ يُخَاطَبُونَ بِمَا يَرْدَعُهُمْ قَالَتْ عَلَى 
يا أيها النبي جاهد الكفار والمنافقين وغلل عليهم ومأواهم جهنم وبئس المصير That's from Surah Tawbah, verse 73. المنافقون لا يجاهدون بالسلاح وإنما يجاهدون بالحجة والكلام والرد عليهم بالغلظة ردعا لهم تنفيرا للناس عنهم وقال تعالى فيهم وقل لهم في أنفسهم قول بليغة هؤلاء لهم خطاب خاص لأنهم أهل عناد ومكابرة ولا ولا يريدون الحق بل يريدون تضليل الناس فهؤلاء يخاطبون بما يليق بهم So then the Sheikh mentions and he says So for those who are oppressors from the people the, 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 the people of oppression the ones who are oppressors from from the people of the book right from the people of the book for example give this example they are, they are stubborn rejectors and the arrogant from them he says for these there's a different approach so for these you don't have the same approach as we mentioned earlier you know with the, uh, you know uh, with softness uh, and this kind of approach rather you have the approach which stops them from spreading their uh, uh, doubts and falsehood and then the sheikh mentions from the quran which we read يا أيها النبي جاهد الكفار والمنافقين وغلظ عليهم ومأواهم جهنم وبئس المصير سورة توبة verse 73 so if you go to the translation uh, verse 73 there we'll see O Prophet strive hard against the disbelievers and the hypocrites and be harsh against them their abode is hell and worst indeed is that destination so the Sheikh says, he says and then he mentions the uh, the munafiqun as well he mentions the hypocrites he says that they aren't um, we don't sort of strive against them with weapons or, you know, f- from a physical point of view. Rather, we um, approach them and deal with them uh, with evidence, with clear evidence, with speech, and um, by refuting their doubts, for example, um, with harshness. So they have a different approach. We have a different approach to these ca- that th- this group that we're discussing now. So we have that more harshness to stop them to stop them in their tracks, basically, in spreading their doubts and their misguidance, etc. And then the Shaykh mentions here as well, he mentions another ayah from the Qur'an. He says, وَقُلْ لَهُمْ فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ قَوْلٌ بَلِيغًا Surah Nisa, verse 63. And if we go to verse 63, we'll read the whole ayah. Dead hypocrites are those of whom Allah knows what is in their hearts. So turn aside from them. Do not punish them, but admonish them. And speak to them an effective word. I believe in Allah, worship Him, obey Him, and be afraid of Him to reach their inner selves. So we can see from there as well. And then the Shaykh mentions, so therefore, these this type of people or this group of people with these characteristics, they have a specific approach as we've discussed. And he also mentions it's because all they want to do is uh, basically oppose the truth and they want to, uh, they won't, they won't accept the truth, even though they know it. They turn away from it, and they want to spread misguidance. And that's why. And so, therefore, the approach is that which befits them. Then the Shaykh continues, and he says, "Amma talibu al-mustarshid, fahada yuhatab bil yuhatab bil rifti wal rahmati wal lutf, li anna hu yurid al haqqa wa yurid al ilma wal faida." So the Sheikh says, as for the seeker of guidance, the one who's seeking guidance and the truth and he's seeking guidance and he wants it. So it says, for, 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 the, for this kind of person, you speak to this person with softness and with mercy and with courtesy because this person is looking for the truth. He wants the truth. He wants to learn. He wants to have knowledge. He wants to gain it. And he wants, to, he wants, to, he wants a benefit. So the Sheikh continues and he says, قوله اعلم رحمكم الله رحمك الله دعاء لك بالرحمة فإذا رحمك الله فإنك تكون سعيدا بها في الدنيا والآخرة إذا دخلت في رحمة الله في رحمة الله إذا دخلت في رحمة الله وهذا دعاء من عالم جليل ورجل صالح يرجى له القبول إن شاء الله. So then the Sheikh breaks down the dua 
I'lam rahimakallah. No, may Allah have mercy upon you. He says that this is a dua for you. It's a dua for you. Um, um, uh, with mercy, made with you know, with mercy. So he says, if Allah, so if Allah has mercy upon you, then of course you'll become happy. We, we'll all become happy. You know, Sunni makes a dua, and we we know that Allah is going to have mercy upon us. We become happy in the dunya and in the akhirah. So he says, so if if you entered Allah's mercy, you know, this dua, you know, from a alim, from a scholar, a great scholar, a man, a sincere man, it is wished or it is expected or wished in that case that it would be accepted, of course, from, from a great scholar, a great scholar and a sincere man, of course. Somebody like that who makes a dua for you, it's accepted. The Shaykh continues and he says, Qawluhu yajibu. So he mentions the word yajibu. He says, Al wajib, huwa ma yuthabu fa'iluhu wa yuaqabu tarikuhu wal mustahabu, huwa ma yuthabu fa'iluhu wa la yuaqabu tarikuhu wal mubahu, la thawaba fi fi'lihi wa la yuqaba fi tarkihi. So then we move on to what the Shaykh mentioned after that he says yajib this verb yajib uh, to be obligated with for example or uh, obligation and he says al wajib obligation what does it mean he says al wajib so something that is wajib or classed as al wajib the person the doer of that task or that act the action if if he does it he's rewarded and the one who leaves it is punishable and has committed a sin. That's the definition of al-wajib. So for example, um, for example, praying the five daily prayers, al-wajib, al-fard. If we pray and uh, pray our five daily prayers, those which are al-wajib upon us, then we have been rewarded. If we leave them off, we are you know, entitled to punishment. And, and we sin. That's the meaning of wajib. Al-Mustahab, recommended. The Shaykh says that, so the one who does something that is recommended, then he is rewarded for it. If if the same person leaves something that's a recommended act, leaves it off, then he's not punishable and he doesn't commit a sin. So that's Al-Mustahab. Then we have Al-Mubah, and that is something that is permissible. Something permissible to do. Let's say you, you're going to play football or you go for a jog, for example. Easy thing. Uh, to, uh, we can all... Um, or, you know, you, you're doing a sport that is not causing you to do any haram. So, something that's permissible. So, if somebody does something that's permissible, that's mubah, there's no reward for doing it and there's no punishment or sin for leaving it off. So that's the difference between these uh, uh, what al wajib is, what al mustahab is, and what al mubah is. So the Shaykh Kutuni says, فَقَوْلُهُ يَجِبُ يَعْنِي أَنَّ هَذَا الْأَمْرِ لَيْسَ هُوَ مِنَ الْمُسْتَحَبُ وَلَا مِنَ الْمُبَاح بَلْ هُوَ مِنَ الْوَاجِبَ الْأَيْنِي So the Shaykh says, so yajib, so, so the, the original author mentions yajib, and the Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan is mentioning, he says here, meaning that this affair is not from the affairs of al mustahab, and it's not from the affairs of al-mubah so it's not from the affairs of what's recommended it's not from the affairs of that which is permissible to do rather it's obligatory yajib al-wajib as we established earlier so the shaykh says فَإِذَا تَرَكْنَا تَعَلَّمُوا هَذِي الْمَسَائِلِ فَإِنَّنَّا نَعْثَمْ لِأَنَّ هَذَا شَأْنُ الْوَاجِبِ لَمْ يَقُولْ يُسْتَحَبْ لَنَا أَوْ يُسْتَحْسَنُ لَنَا بَلْ قَالَ يَجِبُ عَلَيْنَا وُجُوبٌ وَالْوُجُوبُ مَعْنَاهُ الْحَتْمُ مِنْ مَنْ تَرَكَهُ يَأْثُمْ وَلِأَنَّ الْإِلْمَ لَا يُحْسَلُ عَلَيْهِ الْإِلَّا بِالتَّعَلُّمْ وَتَعَلُّمْ يُحْتَاجُ إِلَى إِنَايَةٍ وَجُهْدٍ وَوَقْتٍ وَيَحْتَاجُ وَيُحْتَاجُ إِلَى فَهْمٍ وَإِلَى حُضُورِ قَلْبٍ هَذَا هُوَ التَّعَلُّمْ So then the Shaykh says, he says, so if we leave off, for example, learning, because learning and seeking knowledge of those things that are, are a necessity, in our deen, for us to, you know, be Muslim, then that is wajib. 
And so if we leave these four affairs off that the shaykhs will go through with us, if we leave these four affairs off, we are sinning. Meaning that we need to learn them, we need to be aware of them. And then the shaykh mentions, he says, the original author didn't say uh, it's recommended for us or it's advisable for us. Rather, he said, it's yajib, it's wajib upon us, all of us. And then the shaykh mentions that that is it. It's, it's, it that's the bottom line. It's, uh, it's um, obligatory upon us to know these affairs. And if we don't, we sin. And the shaykh said, because the knowledge isn't sought except by way of learning. And he also says that knowledge is, you know, it requires seeking knowledge or, or learning. Learning, the act of learning requires care and effort and time. And it also needs, it also requires, you know, understanding. So it requires you to un have understanding as well and to be able to understand. And also requires that your heart is in it. Your heart has to be there. You have to be in it fully. And that's what learning is. That's what the definition of learning is. The Sheikh continues and he says, قَوْلُهُ أَرْبَعُ مَسَائِلٍ يَعْنِي مُبَاحِثْ سُمِّيَتْ الْمُبَاحِثْ أو المباحث سميت <coughs> مسائل لأنها يجب أن يسأل عنها ويؤنى بها So then the Sheikh mentioned so the four he's breaking down everything that the original author said so he says the four uh, the four affairs or the four مسائل and he says it's, it's called مسائل or it's, it's named in this way is because these affairs require uh, the questions to be asked about it so we ask and we get an answer and uh, uh, from that approach, then the Shaykh continues and he says, "Qawluhu al-ilm al-murad bil-ilm huna huwa al-ilm al-shari li-anahu li-anahu huwa al-ladhi yajibu ta'alumuhu wa hadhi al-masail yajibu ta'alumuha ala kulli muslimin dhakarin aw untha hurrin aw abdin ghaniyin aw faqirin malikin aw su'lukin kullu muslimin yajibu alayhi an yata'allama hadhi al-masail al-arba'a So the Sheikh says there that he says al ilm knowledge. He says the purpose of what's intended by this is is the ilm what knowledge is intended. We're talking about the ilm al shari, uh, the ilm of the deen, the ilm that's that's the deen, the Quran and the Sunnah. That what the Prophet sallallahu came with. Our deen, knowledge of Islam, and not any other type of knowledge which the Sheikh will mention. Not worldly knowledge. This is to do with, it's obligatory upon us to know uh, the knowledge that is to do with our deen, a shari in the sharia. And uh, and the shaykh says, he says, he says, and, the, and, and, is, and therefore it's obligatory to learn. And he says that these affairs, these affairs that we're going to be discussing, he says it's upon every Muslim, male or female, free or Slave, a slave, free person or a slave, rich or poor, king or pauper, or king or other than him. Since every Muslim is obligatory for him to learn these four affairs that we're going to discuss. The Sheikh says, وَهَذَا مَا يُسَمِّيهِ الْعُلَمَاء بِالْوَاجِبِ الْعَيْنِ وَهُوَ الَّذِي يَجِبُ عَلَى كُلِّ أَحَدٍ مِنْ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَالصَّلَوَاتِ الْخَمْسِ على الرجال والنساء وصلاة الجماعة في المساجد على الرجال هذا واجب على كل فرد من المسلمين أن يتعلمها ولذلك قال يجب علينا ولم يقل يجب على بعضنا وإنما قال يجب علينا يعني معشر المسلمين فهذا من العلم الذي يجب تعلمه على العيان لأن العلم على قسمين. So then the Sheikh says, he says. And this is why the the scholars call this al wajib al aini. They call this type of knowledge that must be learned. They call it wajib al aini, and that will be explained shortly. It says it is that which wajib al aini means that which is required by every Muslim individual. They must learn it. They must know it. There's no um, excuse for being ignorant of it. So the Shaykh gives an example, he says, for example, the five daily prayers upon the men and the women, the uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, Jama'ad, uh, the congregational prayer 
in the masjid upon the men. He says this is obligatory, is wajib upon every individual from the Muslimin that they learn the, this, they learn it, they know it. So he goes for that. Therefore, he said, "Yajibu alayna." So he says, therefore, he said that it's obligatory upon us. And he didn't say that it's obligatory upon some of us. Rather, it's obligatory upon all of us, everybody. And meaning the Muslim society, all of the Muslims, all of them. So it says, this is from knowledge, which is obligatory upon us to learn. And it says, so we, it's, it, there's, there's no straying away from it. We have to know it, absolutely. And then the Sheikh says, and he says, and, and, and knowledge is upon, or has two categories. There's two categories of knowledge here. So he's going to break that down for us, inshallah. He says, Al awalu ma yajibu ta'allumuhu ala la'yan fala yu'dharu ahadun bi jahlihi wa huwa ma la yastakimu dinu illa bih mithlu arkan al-islam al-khamsati allati hiya al-shahadatani wa iqamu salati wa ita'u zakati wa sawmu ramadana wa hajju bayti allahi al-haram la yajuzu li muslimin an yajhalaha بَلْ لَا بُدَّ لَهُ أَنْ يَتْعَلَّمَهَا So the Shaykh then says that the first category of knowledge, he says that which is obligatory to learn for everybody, every Muslim individual, as we mentioned earlier. Therefore, it's that an individual or a person is not excused um, of being ignorant of this knowledge. Just how it doesn't remain, uh, it, say, it says, Okay, we mentioned this earlier as well. That is that knowledge that is needed because without it, you can't um, follow your deen or you can't carry out uh, actions of our of, 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 of deen, what's required from us as Muslims. We won't be able to pray properly, we won't be able to fast properly, we won't understand what the shahada is, what the shahadatain actually mean, what, what we need to know about them. We won't know how to do hajj, for example, properly. So there's these necessities that we must know in terms of knowledge that we must know and the deen does not, your religion won't stand up correctly, firmly without them. So therefore, that's why it is obligatory for every single person. And not just a particular group from the Muslims. And the Sheikh gives an example. He goes, for example, the five, uh, the five pillars of Islam, the two shahadas, establishing the prayer, um, giving in charity, fasting the month of Ramadan, and uh, making pilgrimage to Allah's house. He says it's not a permissible for a Muslim that he's ignorant of these affairs. And it's incumbent upon every Muslim to learn these affairs in detail. The Shaykh continues and he says, لِأَنَّ تَعَلُّمَ مَعْنَ الشَّهَادَتَيْنِ إِنَّمَا هُوَ تَعَلُّمُ الْعَقِيدَةِ يَتَعَلَّمُ الْمُسْلِمُ الْعَقِيدَةِ مِنْ أَجْلِ الْعَمَلِ بِهَا وَيَتَعَلَّمَ مَا يُضَادُهَا مِنْ أَجْلِ أَنْ يَتَجَنَّبَهَا هَذَا مَضْمُونَ الشَّهَادَتَيْنِ كَذَلِكَ يَتَعَلَّمُ وواجبات الصلاة وسنن الصلاة لا بد أن يتعلم بالتفصيل هذه الأمور ليس مجرد أنه يصلي وهو لا يعرف أحكام الصلاة كيف كيف يعمل الإنسان عملا وهو لا يعلم هذا العمل الذي يؤديه كيف يؤدي الصلاة وهو جاهل بأحكامها فلا بد أن يتعلم أحكام الصلاة ومبتلات الصلاة لا بد من تعلم هذا so then the Sheikh says in this paragraph, he says because um, that you learn or learning the Shahadatain, for example, the two Shahadas, it is indeed without a doubt, it is, it is learning the Aqidah, learning our creed, our faith, knowing it. And the Shahadatain, of course, is linked to Aqidah. Also, uh, and he says that the Muslim learns his Aqidah in order that he can act upon it and live by it and carry that out as a Muslim. Also, um, and also that he learns 
those affairs that oppose his aqidah as well so he can avoid them in order to avoid the pitfalls he says this is uh, you know the point of the shahadatain for example or that what was linked to the shahadatain and then he continues and he says likewise learning the pillars of the prayer and the conditions of the prayer and the obligations of the prayer and the sunan of the prayer and it's no and it's obligatory or it's, there's no doubt and it's incumbent that um, that the muslim learns these affairs which you just mentioned with detail or in detail not just um just praying going to the masjid or whatever maybe just praying for the sake of praying and we aren't aware of the rulings of the prayer for example oh so how can we um you know act how can a person act uh, for example upon something and he doesn't know anything about it properly and hasn't learned the affair uh, in the detail that's required of him to learn those affairs how can he carry out his prayer for example how can the, how can the prayer be carried out and the person's ignorant of the rulings for example so the sheikh says so no doubt and it's incumbent that uh, he learns the rulings of the prayer for example he also learns the nullifies of the prayer so he can avoid nullifying his prayer and therefore uh, it's a must it's a must uh, that we learn these affairs some of the examples that we mentioned here that the sheikh mentioned then he continues the sheikh continues and he says kadhalika yata'allamu ahkam al-zakah yata'allam ahkam al-siyam wa yata'allam ahkam al-hajj fa idha arada an yahujja wajaba alayhi ta'allumu wajaba alayhi ta'allumu ahkam al-hajj wa ahkam al-umrah min ajli an yu'addi hadhihi al-ibadat 'ala al-wajh al-mashru'i so the sheikh says and likewise and like that um, uh, he learns the rulings of uh, zakat so we know you know how to give zakat how to carry out and we're doing it properly according to that which allah intended also learning likewise learning the affairs of of uh, fasting so we learn about fasting you know um how do we fast how do we carry out the fast um what breaks our fast what nullifies our fast so we can avoid also you know so that we can carry out and complete our worship he mentions also learning the affairs of the hajj so if hajj becomes obligatory upon you and you go for hajj and the pilgrimage then you know how to carry out hajj and umrah you know the rulings you know what to do and the sheikh says in order so you learn all these affairs in detail in order for you to carry out the uh, you know the acts of worship uh, upon uh, that which is intended by allah's sharia allah's law and you're following the law, the rulings properly. And you're carrying out your worship correctly then. And so, inshallah, it's accepted. But if you do it incorrectly, it's not going to be accepted. If you, for example, nullify your prayer regularly, you're, you're, you're nullifying your um, uh, fasting, and you haven't learned about how to carry out Umrah properly, and what's actually uh, expected of you, and Hajj as well, then you end up, you're, you're in a great risk, in a grave danger of, nullifying your acts of worship and all the effort that you put in uh, so uh, the shaykh continues and he says وَهَذَا الْقِسْمُ لَا يُؤْذَرُ أَحَدْ بِجَهْلِهِ وَهُوْ مَا يُسَمَّى بِالْوَاجِبِ الْعَيْنِ عَلَى قُلِ مُسْلِمِ so the shaykh says and goes so what we just discussed here is that is the category the first category of knowledge that which the person the Muslim is not excused of being ignorant of you have to know it. there's no excuse of ignorance here and he says and this is what they call Al-wajib al which we mentioned earlier on, is uh, obligatory upon every Muslim, every individual, as we mentioned. So, inshallah, um, we'll stop there today and uh, we'll continue next week, uh, Friday at 8 p.m., inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Subhanakullahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.